The Directorate General of Forces Intelligence is the military intelligence service of the Bangladesh Armed Forces, which supplies the Bangladeshi government with both national and foreign intelligence. DGFI is operationally responsible for providing national security and intelligence information to Bangladesh government and armed forces. Although DGFI was formed as a military intelligence, over time it has established itself as the principal and intelligence unit in Bangladesh alongside national security intelligence. The DGFI's primary role is to collect, collate, evaluate and disseminate all services strategical and topographical intelligence about law and order situation, armed forces and to ensure counter intelligence and security measures for Bangladesh government and Bangladesh armed forces. Although all defense information are kept classified by the agency and armed forces, there are reports that DGFI had the largest budget in Bangladeshi intelligence community. The DGFI has been involved in most paramilitary operations as well as counter-terrorism and cyber warfare. DGFI is regarded as one of the most dreaded intelligence agency in the world due to its aggressive techniques. The agency has received sheer criticism from Human Rights Watch for its brutal interrogation techniques, targeted killing, assassinations and its involvement with various militant outfits. History After independence in 1971, national security intelligence was created as the sole intelligence agency in Bangladesh. However, external threat from foreign military led to the creation of Directorate of Forces Intelligence in 1972. The role of the FI was only limited to sharing intelligence with the armed forces. Under Major General Z. R. Rahman's presidency, on 24 August 1976 DFI was improved and rechristened as Directorate General of Forces Intelligence which led to a massive modification in the organizational structure of the agency, and the agency was transformed from defensive to an offensive intelligence unit. In 1978, DGFI headquarters was relocated to Dhaka Cantonment from Bailey Road. According to analysts, the structure of DGFI is a close resemblance of inter-services intelligence. Captain K. M. Aminul Islam was appointed as the first Director General of DGFI. Since then, DGFI serves as the principal intelligence unit of Bangladesh Armed Forces. In 1994, DGFI's organizational structure was reformed, and since then DGFI has transformed into the primary intelligence agency in Bangladesh, alongside national security intelligence. The recruitment of DGFI is undertaken by the armed forces and the Director General is appointed the President with recommendation from the Chief of Army Staff. The DGFI was structured to be manned by officers from the three main military services, to specialize in the collection, analysis and assessment of military intelligence. Over the years, DGFI's role have transformed to both military and non-military intelligence gathering as the agency is active in more than 40 countries worldwide. DGFI headquarters was permanently relocated inside a 14th-storied tower near Rajanigandha area inside Dhaka Cantonment in 2006. Current DGFI Director, Major General Mohammed Akbar Hussain is the 24th Director General of the agency. Since he took over his assignment on 10 March 2013 succeeding Major General Sheikh Maman Khalid. Purpose To collect, collate, evaluate and disseminate all services strategical and topographical intelligence about law and order situation, armed forces and to ensure counterintelligence and security measures for Bangladesh government and Bangladesh armed forces. According to its fiscal 2014 budget, the DGFI's top priorities are counter-terrorism, counterintelligence with India and Myanmar described as priority targets. Apprise Bangladeshi government with important overseas events. Apprise Bangladeshi government about any activities that threatens national security, cyber intelligence, military intelligence, 
provide Bangladesh Army with foreign intelligence and other nations' armed forces. Joint Intelligence works with Detective Branch of Bangladesh Police and Rapid Action Battalion to gather detective and criminal intelligence, air intelligence, gather aerial intelligence, naval intelligence, gather intelligence on the advancements in other nations' navies and maritime intelligence. Notable Directors Captain K. M. Aminul Islam, first Director General of the Agency, appointed by Major General Shahid Ziar Rahman. Aminul Islam was dismissed from the post later during the year due to intelligence failure. Chowdhury Fazlul Bari, Mahabat Jan Chowdhury, Sadiq Hassan, A. T. M. Amin, M. A. Halim, Rezikul Haider, Sadiq Hassan Rumi. Golam Muhammad, Mola Faisal Akbar, Sheikh Mamin Khalid, Muhammad Akbar Hussain, 24th and the current director of DGFI. Organizational structure. The agency consists of a director and seven deputy directors. DGFI operates under seven directorates makes up the primary structure of the organization. The seven directorates are Directorate of Air Intelligence the primary intelligence arm of the Bangladesh Air Force, responsible for the formulation of aerial intelligence, Directorate of Naval Intelligence, the intelligence arm of the Bangladesh Navy, established to report on the advancements in other nations' navies and maritime intelligence, military intelligence, the intelligence arm of Bangladesh Army, established to provide operational, tactical and strategic intelligence to the armed forces, Directorate of Operations, responsible for paramilitary and covert operations as well as special activities. Directorate of Counterintelligence, responsible for collection, analysis and assessment of foreign intelligence. Signal Intelligence Bureau, responsible for collecting, analyzing and distributing aerial intelligence. Directorate of Joint Intelligence, responsible for collection of political intelligence. Counter-Terrorism Unit Counter-Terrorism and Intelligence Bureau is an elite counter-terrorism intelligence unit of DGFI. The Bureau's establishment date is classified, however first made official in 2006. The Bureau was established along with Rapid Action Battalion and the Counter-Terrorism Cell of National Security Agency. CTIB is responsible with collecting and analyzing intelligence on internal threats and counterattack. The role of CTIB is somewhat a resemblance of Cuerpo de Fuerzas Especialis of Mexican Army. The unit is directed by Brigadier General S. M. Mesha Rahman. CTIB agents are recruited from the armed forces and is responsible for gathering intelligence and executing special operations. Training. The DGFI recruits selective personnel from Bangladesh Armed Forces which includes Army, Air Force and Navy. The personnel undergo extensive intelligence training within country and abroad. DGFI holds a very close relation with CIA, MI6, New Zealand's GCSB and ISI and frequently holds joint exercises and operations. DGFI also has training camps in various cities across Bangladesh including Camilla, Cox's Bizar and Silhut. Recruitment only members of the armed forces are eligible to join the DGFI. The committee recruits the most efficient officers from the three branches of the armed forces. Apart from that, there are unofficial reports claiming DGFI employing more than 100,000 civilians as mole around the country. Functions. The DGFI and its activities are highly classified and confidential to both mass media and civilians. The functions and priorities of DGFI have changed throughout years based on countries' political situations and foreign affairs. The primary function of DGFI is the collection of foreign military intelligence, however during recent times. The agency have extended its role economic, political and foreign intelligence. 
DGFI maintains active collaborations with few other secret services in various countries. Its close relation with and shares intelligence with New Zealand's GCSB, Pakistan's Inter-Services Intelligence, India's RAW and CIA, Operations, Think ISI in Pakistan. DGFI is not ISI, but the letters certainly put the fear of God into people. Bangladesh Civil Society Leader Directorate General of Forces Intelligence has been involved in many operations in Bangladesh and other countries. The agency has also been active on Indian and Burmese soil. Military experts have termed the subcontinent as a beehive of intelligence and counterintelligence activity and spycraft and labeled DGFI, ISI, CIA, FSB, RNAW, MSS, Mossad, and MI6 as the big players in Asian intelligence scenario. By country Afghanistan 2008 According to numerous media outlets, DGFI and ISI collaborated with Jihadi Tanzim in spearheading jihadist terrorist actions in India. Although the reports remain controversial as there were no supporting evidence to prove such allegation. India 1995, the 17th of December 1995 in which unauthorized arms were dropped from an Antonov and 26 aircraft in Purulia district in the state of West Bengal in India. A Latvian aircraft dropped a large consignment of arms including several hundred AK-47 rifles and more than a million rounds of ammunition over a large area in Jalda, Gatanga, Belamu, Maramu villages of Purulia district. Several days later, when the plane re-entered Indian airspace, the Bangladeshi MP and retired Major General Muhammad Shubad Ali Buyan had been accused of involvement in the case 25-26. The CBI had submitted to the Calcutta High Court to end user certificates required for international arms deals, allegedly signed by Buyan in his capacity as the Paseo of the Armed Forces Division of the Office of the then Prime Minister of Bangladesh. Begum Khalid Azir. The certificates had been recovered by the British police, who assisted the CBI in the probe in raids on Bleacher's estate. One of the certificates, issued on November 25, 1995, authorized Bleacher's Front Company, Border Technology and Innovations Limited, to conclude the contract with the Bulgarian suppliers, stating that the arms will be used by the Bangladesh Army and will not be exported to any other country. The boxes containing the weapons, found in Purulia, had been marked for Rajendrapur cantonment in Bangladesh 28. However, the government of Bangladesh as well as Buyan has denied such allegations and maintained that the certificates were forged by Bleacher's contacts in Bangladesh. Several intelligence agencies linked DGFI's involvement in Purulia arms drop case. The event, regarded as one of the largest security breaches in India, questioned DGFI's influence over India. 1999, according to an Indian military intelligence source, the Bangladesh spy agency DGFI helped in Pakistani infiltration through the eastern border the terror module that coordinated the 1999 Kandahar hijack was from Bangladesh. 2004 10 truck arms and ammunition haul took place in Chittagong, Bangladesh, on the night of 1 April 2004, when police and Coast Guard interrupted the loading of 10 trucks and seized extensive illegal arms and ammunition at a jetty of Chittagong urea. Fertilizer Limited on the Karnafuli River, the police and Coast Guard interrupted the loading of materials in a smuggling incident. They seized 10 truckloads of material, a total of 4,930 different types of sophisticated firearms, 27,020 grenades, 840 rocket launches, 300 rockets, 2,000 grenade launching tubes, 6,392 magazines, and 11, 40,520 bullets which were being loaded on 10 trucks from two engine boats at the jetty of CUFL at Chittagong Harbour. The illegal arms were believed to be intended for ULFA.
In 2011, Bangladesh government found DGFI and NSI involvement, with two NSI and a DGFI director were charged. According to Indian intelligence analysis, Operation PINCODE was officially launched by DGFI in 2004. The operation was intended to give DGFI a control over West Bengal and Assam state government. Some sources claims that by 2008, DGFI had already got 70% control over West Bengal Assembly. The agency was also blamed for rising terrorist threat in India, however, no trace of DGFI involvement was found. 2006 Indian government alleged DGFI and ISI of Varanasi bomb blasts of March 7, 2006. Police and intelligence officials have leaked details of the blasts, speculation about involvement of Lashkari Kahar, Lashkari Toiba, J.C. Mohammed and Huji of Bangladesh. 2007 Indian intelligence agency RU released a report blaming DGFI behind Assam blast and sheltering ULFA leaders in DGFI safe house. The biggest spy scandal in history of RNAW, a Bangladeshi DGFI agent concealed his nationality before joining RNAW, and was known by the name of Devan Chand Malik in the agency. He was known to have some important intel which was damaging for the national security. He joined the agency in 1999 and used to live in East Delhi. A case of cheating and forgery was filed against him at the Lodi Colony Police Station on the basis of a complaint by a senior RNAW official. No trace of him was found till date. 2008 DGFI loaner operations are important for India's long-term internal and external security considerations. These operations are conducted in collaboration with National Security Intelligence (NSI), BDR and RAB field intelligence units. 2012 Internal Intelligence Agencies of India reported DGFI's strong foothold in India's seven sister states. Indian media also reported on DGFI's plan to establish Greater Bangladesh. A report was also published about DGFI's strong influence in West Bengal Assembly. Indian Army Lieutenant Colonel Sanjay Shandalyar and few other top-level Indian Army officials were honey-trapped by suspected DGFI agent known as Zeba. Sources said Sheba was under RNAW surveillance, including in the virtual world. When the agency received information about her liaison with the officer and subsequent meeting at Delhi, it was officially communicated to the army. Mole Sheba is believed to be a member of Fawzia Hassan spy gang. Fawzia was caught in Meerut a few years back by military intelligence on charges of espionage. Myanmar 2014 Myanmar military and intelligence accused DGFI of trying to isolate Arakan state from the mainland. Their intelligence agencies also accused CIA of assisting DGFI to succeed in the plan. Their allegation, however, remains controversial as it was Myanmar government behind the mass genocide against Muslims in the country. Nepal 2008 RNAW claimed to have found the trace of DGFI involvement in 2008 Assam bombings. According to Intel, it was planned at a three-day conclave held at Dulihel, 30 kilometers north of Kathmandu, between October 15 and October 17. The sources said Colonel Ahmed Sufi of DGFI made a detailed presentation for targeting the northeast. The ISI was represented at the meet by a lieutenant general level official responsible for overseeing affairs in South Asia. The ISI official took a circuitous route from Pakistan to Dubai to Dhaka before reaching Kathmandu via Bhiman Bangladesh Airlines in order to avoid any suspicion by Indian security agencies. The sources revealed, 2014. DGFI tracked down Indian Mujahideen's top commanders, Zira Raman alias Wakas and Tessin actor alias Monu in Nepal. The operation was executed after request from RNAW and Nepal law enforcement agencies.
Pakistan 1979. The DGFI started sending its officers to the ISI training center in Islamabad, United States 1978. Twenty army officers assigned to the DGFI were deputed to the Camp Perry, the farm training center of the CIA in Virginia. Later in the same year another group was deputed to the Hartford training facility of the CIA in North Carolina. Controversies Blocking advertisers on Prothor Malo and the Daily Star Bangladeshi intelligence agency DGFI was accused of blocking major companies from advertising in two major newspapers in Bangladesh, the Daily Prothor Malo and Daily Star, causing a loss of $2 million during first month. Telenor, which owns 55% stake at Grameen Phone admitted that top-level officers from DGFI forced him to stop advertising in these two newspaper. However, other large corporations refused to comment on the issue. The demand for foreign-owned corporations to stop advertising in the Prothormalo and Daily Star newspapers was allegedly given by officers from the Directorate General of Forces Intelligence. Following the August 16 publication of a story on the Army's killing of five men in the Chittagong Hill Tracts, later that day, Army officials contacted both papers and criticized them for describing the dead men as indigenous people instead of terrorists, sources said on condition of anonymity for fear of reprisals. However, one senior manager at Grameen Phone told Al Jazeera on the condition he would not be identified. The DGFI officer said that we could no longer advertise in either the Prothormalo or the Daily Star, and that steps would be taken against us if we defied the order. The warning was verbal and not put in writing, he said. Grameen Phone was not told the reason for this. We were only told that the order comes from the top, the manager said. The company had planned on launching a new campaign the following day, and so it immediately pulled the planned advertisement in Prothor Malio, he said. Morshed Alam, executive director of Media Buyer Mindshare, confirmed on the evening of August 16 that Roby Axiata, Airtel, and Unilever asked his company not to buy any further advertisements in the two newspapers. We were informed by our clients that due to unavoidable circumstances, we should stop all advertisements in Prothor Malo and Daily Star, Alam said. We initially continued to advertise in the magazine supplements, but that was also stopped. DGFI agent Jeevan Chand Malik in RNAWA Bangladeshi DGFI agent concealed his nationality before joining RNAW and was known by the name of Devan Chand Malik in the agency. He was known to have some important intel which was damaging for the national security. He joined the agency in 1999 and used to live in East Delhi. A case of cheating and forgery was filed against him at the Lodi Colony Police Station on the basis of a complaint by a senior RNAW official. No trace of him was found afterward.